Good morning! Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. This is an exciting video for me because new setting unlocked. This is my new New York City apartment. There's the city that I love. And right here are all of the books that I brought with me. So I wanted to basically go through them and let you know all of the books that I have in my new capsule bookshelf. Basically, I move around a lot and so I bring like a selection of books that I want to read for the foreseeable future. This will be added to, I, I won't lie. I already have plans to go book shopping literally today, but I thought I would go through all of the books that I brought with me and it'll be a fun time. Firstly, we have Counterweight. This is by Juna and translated by Anton Her. This is a strange little sci-fi book, which I actually read on the plane over here. Um, it wasn't my favorite thing in the world, I'm not gonna lie, this genre isn't my favorite thing in the world, but um, there were so many characters, I felt like everything was being told retrospectively. I just didn't really love the narrative style of this book. But anyway, I have it with me and I think the cover is gorgeous. The other book that I read on my journey here was Exteriors by Annie Erno. Annie Erno actually won the Nobel Prize for Literature last year, I wanna say. And so I've been desperate to read one of her books ever since. This is a really interesting little book because it basically takes the idea that we can learn a lot about our interior selves based on the way that we view exterior happenings, so the way that we observe other people. And so Annie Erno basically writes this series of vignettes, I suppose, where she's basically a voyeur watching the things going on around her and capturing like little bits of dialogue or little things that have been written down, things that people say and do that she kind of then reflects on. Next, we have this book. This is Society of the Spectacle by Guy Debord. Now, I am reading this for a video I'm doing on Matty Healy from the 1975. And I started, <laughs> after my flight, like I finished those two books on the plane, we actually got like really, really delayed um, because we just sat on the runway for like two hours once we arrived in New York. So we were we were here, I was so close, um, but there were problems at the airport. Um, so we just had to sit on the runway for over two hours. Um, and so I had the whole flight time and then that extra time to just sit and read. So I'd finished those two books. And then when I got on the subway, um, to come to my apartment, I got this out of my backpack and started trying to read it, but honestly, it was so intense. <laughs> and it's very like theoretical, and after all that time, all those hours awake, I think it was like five o'clock in the morning for my brain because of the time differences, it was not going in. It was not going into my brain, so I'm gonna, you know, now that I've had a sleep, I'm gonna sit down and start trying to read this. Um, but it's intense. And then the book that I actually did end up reading this morning um, when I woke up, I had such a nice morning today. I like woke up with the sunrise, um, I sat on my sofa um, and I did some writing, like just in a notepad. Um, so it was kind of imperfect and, you know, um, just wrote out some thoughts that I've been thinking. <laughs> and then I sat and finally started this book. This is a book I've been meaning to read for so long, but now I'm finally reading it for my Matty Healy video. So this is On the Road by Jack Kerouac, which is, you know, a modern classic. And of course, I need to finally read it. Speaking of books I need to finally read, the Seven Moons of Marley Almeida. Now, I did start this book, but then I just like moved on to other things. So how far did I get? Um, okay, I think I got 44 pages in. That was when I last left New York, and I feel like I got back to my childhood bedroom where I store all of my books, and there were just like so many things that I wanted to pick up and read, um, and so I did that instead. I am gonna read this book. I'm very excited about it, and it was good too. Like I was enjoying it while I was reading it, so I don't really know why I put it down, but. That's the way it goes sometimes. Next, we have A Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melcher, or Fernanda Melcher, um, winner of an English Pen Award, and I loved her book, Paradise. Um, I read it all in one sitting, absolutely devoured it, and everyone has been saying to me, you have to read Hurricane Season if you liked that book, so. I'm gonna read it. Next, I have Checkout 19. This is by an Irish author, Claire Louise Bennett. I actually read Pond for my English Lit degree, and I remember really loving it. So um, when I saw that she'd written a novel, I was like, sign me up. And as you know, recently I've been having a bit of a love affair with Irish authors, so I'm excited about this one. Next, we have this book. Well, nearly dropped it. This is The Novelist. I'm here in New York to write my novel. And so I'm hoping this is gonna just keep me inspired. So I'm feeling very inspired right now, but I feel like when I go through like a lull, when I have a little moment where I'm feeling like I need a little pick me up, this book is going to do exactly that for me. I think this is by Jordan Castro. Next, there goes the monetization of this video. 
Night Bitch. This is by Rachel Yoda. I've heard really mixed reviews on this, so I will share my review very soon, I'm sure, and let you know what I think. But I think this is going to be kind of in a genre of books that I really enjoy, of like unhinged women doing crazy things, and I can't wait. Next we have Yoke. I think this might actually be my next read for funsies, because On the Road and Society of the Spectacle I am reading for video concepts, but I also like to always have things on the go that are just for like relaxing, that I don't have any pressure on me to like write a review about, so um, Yoke I think is going to be that, and this is set in New York City, so of course I have to read it in New York City, you know? Okay, on to the next pile. I brought an absurd number of books. Anyway, this is Night Train to the Stars by Kenji Miyazawa, and I'm taking this on my trip to Japan, which is very, very soon. Next, we have Mouth to Mouth by Antoine Wilson. I've heard really great things about this. This was like one that I so nearly didn't bring with me, and then I had a little bit of extra space in my suitcase, so then I just like packed it. <laughs> Three Rooms by Joe Hamia. Now, weirdly, I've actually not seen many good reviews of this book. I've seen kind of mixed reviews of this book, but that makes me curious and intrigued. And I know this is set in London and talks a little bit about British politics, which kind of is what my book might do as well. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how someone else um, tackles kind of contemporary uh, British politics um, and then see what that teaches me. We'll see. Another book set in New York City is O William by Elizabeth Strout, a superbly gifted storyteller and a craftswoman in a league of her own, says Hilary Mantel. So there you go. This was also shortlisted for the Booker Prize and I've been saving it until I can read it in New York. That was meant to sound like Alicia Keys and didn't. Another book I'm taking with me to Japan because it's written by a Japanese author. This is Things Remembered and Things Forgotten and this is a short story collection by Kyoko Nakajima and kind of matches my outfit today, not gonna lie. Um, this is a book I'm going to read on my trip to Korea, The Age of Doubt by Pak Kyungni and translated by a range of different authors which is really exciting. So I think again this is a short story collection and I'm looking forward to reading that in Korea. Another book for Korea is Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hyo Jin and translated by Jamie Chang. As you can see, I'm trying to read books written by Korean authors in Korea, Japanese authors in Japan. I feel like that will be a fun little video series um, and something I'm very excited to do. So um, yeah, I've had this book for ages and ages and ages and finally gonna get around to reading it. In actual career. So cool! And adding to that reading pile is Untold Night and Day. I bought this very recently. This is by Bay Sua and um, translated by Deborah Smith. Some of these books I actually don't know a lot about. I've just heard good things and so I'm kind of trying not to know too much before going in. Sometimes I quite like to um, buy a book with limited knowledge of it and then just go in with an open mind and no expectations. So. I'm excited. Then this is a book I bought in Dublin quite recently. This is actually about New York City. I think it's actually a memoir. It's called In Ordinary Times, Fragments of a Family History by Carmel McMahon. And it's about someone who leaves Dublin to move to New York City. And so you can see there's a bit of a theme here. I'm trying to read books about where I am in the world. And I'm here for a month before I go traveling. So I've got some time to get invested in some New York literature. Penultimate pile, let's go. So we have, first and foremost, notes on an execution. Ever since I shared that I own a copy of this book, <laughs> everyone is like telling me I have to read it. Like everyone's like, you need to read this immediately. Um, this I think is going to be very interesting. It is about someone who has committed awful horrible crimes, but then we get perspectives of like the people who knew him. So I think like his mum, his ex-girlfriend, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it is about the women who kind of survive this man, who I believe from the title is about to be executed. So that I think will be fascinating. Next we have Young Mungo. I read Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart and it broke my heart. And I've heard that this book is even sadder um, and even more soul crushing. So I'm like, give me that. Let me in literally inject that into my bloodstream. That's Young Mungo. Another New York City book. This is Olga Dies Dreaming. I mean, look, you can literally see. Actually, this um, cityscape that is on the cover was almost the view from my old apartment, which is really funny. And naturally, that kind of drew me to this. I really love, I find it very immersive to read books 
about the place that I'm in, as obviously you can tell. Next we have The Candy House by Jenny Fagan? Jennifer Egan. So close. Jenny Fagan wrote Hex. Two different people. Wow, look at that on the inside. This, I actually don't remember much about, I just remember that it was one of the most highly praised books of last year, and that got me curious, and I got this for Christmas, so. Excited! Okay, and my last little stack of books. I think these are mostly for videos, actually. Yeah, they are. We have When We Are Engulfed in Flames by David Sedaris. These are kind of comedic short stories taken from David Sedaris's life. He's actually written so many books, and I know that he's really, really highly loved. So um, I'm reading this for a video on Phoebe Bridges um, and her book recommendations, which you will see in your sub box sometime soon. Then I have this book. This is by William S. Burroughs. This is Back to the Matty Healy uh, video. You can tell these were just like randomly in my suitcase and <laughs> I did not plan um, a sensical order to show them to you in. So anyway, this is Queer by William S. Burroughs and um, I actually have already finished this book. And I'll tell you about it in the Matty Healy video. I'm such a tease. Again, these two books I have already read but I'm gonna be talking about them in a video very, very soon. So this is In the Dream House and Insatiable. No spoilers, sorry. A book I've been meaning to read for a really long time. This is A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing by Ema McBride. Dakota recommended this to me very highly. And listen, if people I respect tell me that a book is good, I will go out and buy it. So that is why I now have this. And then the final book that I have in this video is The Idiot by Elif Batuman. This is again for my video on Phoebe Bridges. Um, this won the Pulitzer Prize, oh no, it was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, and Miranda July describes it as an addictive, sprawling epic, which she wolfed down. So I look forward to doing the same thing. And that is my collection of books. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this gave you some reading um, inspiration. This is where I've been spending my morning sitting here writing some little things for my little novel, and that is now where I'm going to return. Thanks so much for watching. All the best, stay in touch. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye.